That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Unhinged, which will be uh, released uh, digital in demand, and I believe in some theaters in some parts of the country, August 14th, 2020. Uh, it is the latest film directed by Derek Bort, uh, starring Russell Crowe, um, released by Solstice Studios. Uh, th there were big plans for this film to be the first um, theatrical experience uh, in July, at the beginning of July, but then, of course, the pandemic is continuing, so it was delayed a bit. Oh. Well, the story is about a man named... He's not named, I think. He just... Oh, he's not named? He's okay. just as the man. So Russell Crowe plays uh, this man with extreme road rage. The film starts with him uh, visiting a home, which we find out is his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. uh, and he kills her and the man who's living in the house with her, I'm assuming her new husband, and he burns the house down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cut to a woman named uh, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Rachel is uh, in her home with her 15-year-old son, mm -hmm. And then her adult brother and his new, like, lady. And we get the sense right away that she's kind of like, uh, she doesn't have her shit together. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's running late. She's sleeping on the couch for some reason. Um, her brother's taking advantage of her kindness. Mm -hmm. The son is kind of annoyed with her because she's... Um, always frazzled. Always frazzled. She's in the middle of a divorce, mm -hmm. which would involve like a custody battle and selling their home. We also find out that Rachel is a hairstylist whose salon had to shut down mm -hmm. for some reason. So um, she's having a hard time making money. Uh -huh. So she's running late for an appointment and to take her son, uh, Kyle, to school. Mm -hmm. And they live in New Orleans. Traffic is bad. She hops in the car thinking she'll make it. Um, she gets a call from the client she's supposed to see. <laughs> and the lady's like, are you going to be here? Yeah, I'm just running late. The client's like, that's unacceptable. You're fired. Mm -hmm. You're always late. Mm -hmm. And the son's freaking out because if he's late to class again, he'll get detention. Mm -hmm. So there's a few, there are a few minutes of them in traffic. The son convinces her... She has a bad, uh, she, she's having a bad morning because she gets fired and she's feeling down. The sun kind of perks her up and then she says, okay, you can tell me how to get to your school the fastest route. So they get off the freeway and as they're exiting the off ramp, there's a big gray truck that is um, at the stoplight. And when the light turns green, this truck doesn't move. And instead of Rachel just going around... She honks pretty aggressively at him. Mm -hmm. And right when the light's about to turn red again, she like skirts around him. Mm -hmm. Well, that was Russell Crowe, who obviously um, was not having a good day because uh, he had just killed a couple people and committed arson. So he, um, he follows her and like basically says, like, you need to apologize to me. Mm -hmm. And his uh, sort of approach to her, I thought, was actually... I, Pretty I, reasonable. Yeah, kind of gentle, actually. He, he says, like, I've had, I think I've had a, a really hard time, and I, I'm sorry if I inconvenienced you, kind of. And then... But he goes on, uh, an important sort of line that he tells her is, like, you're supposed to give, a, like, a courtesy honk, mm -hmm. or a courtesy tap. A courtesy tap. You're just supposed to tap the horn, and she was, like, barreling down on the horn twice at him. So she's like, no, I'm not apologizing. I didn't do anything wrong. Her son, who's in the back seat of their car, is like, come on, mom, just apologize. Like, this man's scary. She doesn't. So um, <clears throat> things escalate very quickly because he follows her mm -hmm. um, after she drops off her son at school. Um, he follows her to a gas station. And while she's inside paying for gas... He, like, pulls up behind her. We also find out that while she was... She left her phone in the car, because mm -hmm. this is important. Mm -hmm. um, while she was in the gas station, he went into her car, stole her phone. So now, in the surveillance camera, while she's in the gas station, she sees him. So she tells the people, the cashier and a gentleman in the gas station, Hey, there's a man following me. I'm scared. And the guy who's in the gas station is like, well, if you're scared, I'll walk you out, and I'll get his license plate. Mm -hmm. And if he follows you, we'll call the police and give his plate. Also keep in mind that that morning before they left to school and to work, it was all over the news that a man in a gray pickup truck had just like murdered two people and set a house on fire. Yes. So presumably all of New Orleans is looking for a man in a big gray truck. Also, the opening credits of the film 
go on and on about like the like how uncivil everyone's become, mm-hmm. how un like basically how like disrespectful everyone is, road rage. It makes a, a point more than once to say that there is a shortage of law enforcement agents mm-hmm. in the city of New Orleans. Mm-hmm. So anyway, the gentleman walks Rachel out to her car and then kind of, you know, like looks at the license plate. She takes off. He, the man lingers and tells Russell Crowe's character, like, hey, man, just like leave her alone. Mm-hmm. I got your plate. And Russell Crowe runs him over. Yep. Like he fucking mashes the gas and runs this man over. Um, and that's the beginning of the craziness. Yeah, that's and the first. Uh, well, it it opens on a, a scene of uh, great brutality, and there it's punctuated by several others that are like, oh, I. Yeah. You don't usually see things go there. Like so, that. so the main device for him terrorizing her is he Russell Crowe's character has Rachel's phone. Mm-hmm. So he knows all her contacts. He's been reading through her texts, her messages. She's the type who puts everyone's address and their contact. So he's mess. And he replaced, he stole her phone out of her car, but yes. Russell Crowe's character has put his phone in her bag. So he's calling her, telling her. Yeah, like an old flip phone. An old flip phone. And he's also installed a... Um, she had an iPad tablet. in the car, yeah. and he like taped it under her seat, so he's tracking her location. Yes. So that's how he's like keeping track of her. But he's like following her, he rams into her, there are a couple chase scenes. He... Rachel was also supposed to meet her friend Andy, who's the guy from a. Uh, you know him from House of Cards. House of he's Cards. In a he's stuff. the tech guy. The hacker. The hacker from House uh, of Cards. He's uh, her lawyer. He's actually. her lawyer slash friend, and he's supposed to meet her for lunch to talk about her divorce. And he even mentions, like, are you going to be late? Because you, you seem to not have uh, the ability to be on time. Mm-hmm. Of course, she's late because she's being stalked and harassed. But Russell Crowe's character shows up at the restaurant pretending to be Rachel's friend, mm-hmm. in which I thought was like a really good scene. It's a it's it's an unsettling scene because he kind of fools him. He gets Rachel on the phone. They have an exchange, but Russell Crowe ends up like brutally murdering this man in the restaurant while everyone's watching. Uh huh. Just sits in. These sits clowns there. are just sitting there, like most of them on their phone recording. I thought that was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um. He leaves. He's still driving around. You would think that all of New Orleans PD is looking for him, but somehow he's driving around. <laughs> he does... Um, he ends up going to Rachel's house mm-hmm. to find her brother, Freddie, mm-hmm. and his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Russell Crowe's character ends up killing the girlfriend. He uses Freddie as a device to say, like, you need... If, if you don't... Well, first he tell, he convinces Rachel, you need to tell me who I should kill next. Yeah, he goes, I wrote that down. Like, I'm going to play Russian roulette with your contact list. Yep. And this <laughs> bitch, and I wrote it down, she she was like uh, Deborah. Deborah. The lady who fired, fired her. her this <laughs> I thought that was actually really good. And Russell Crowe's like, uh-uh, I'm not going to do that. Nope, he shows up at Freddie's house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or at Rachel's house to, you know, kill her brother. Mm-hmm. So now he kind of has her on the phone saying, like, you need to do this. You need to take your son here. He still and the cops end up showing up at Rachel's house. Um, they ambush the one cop ambushes Russell Crowe, but Russell Crowe um, he gets shot in the shoulder. Russell Crowe gets shot, but then he, Freddie is tied to like a rolling office chair, and when the cop shoots him, Russell Crowe <laughs> lights Freddie on fire and throws him at the cop. Mm-hmm. So obviously, the law enforcement agent is more concerned about helping Freddie than chasing Russell Crowe. So he's able to get away. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, um, they end up going to another plot point. They end up going to the mom's house. So Rachel's mom, uh, Kyle's great grandma, mm-hmm. she lives in this beautiful gated community. I'm not quite sure why she's not at the house, but we'll talk about that. Um, they just because another plot point is Kyle talks about Fortnite. He's saying that he has some strategy with he and Freddie on how to play Fortnite and like really do well. Mm-hmm. And then Rachel's like, well, I want to know all about that. So then in the end, they're like, well, let's do like you were going to do in Fortnite. We're, we're going to go to like a familiar place and split up because mm-hmm. that was his strategy for Fortnite. So they go to grandma's community, which is like this big elaborate gated community. And she says, it's really confusing if you've never been here. So let's have him follow us here. 
they are able to evade him enough so they can get to grandma's house. Mm -hmm. Rachel puts Kyle in the house. She decides that instead of like switching out cars and leaving or, you know, going to a neighbor's house and calling the police, she gets in her grandma's car, which is a different car, drives away, leaves her son in the house, waits for Russell Crowe's character to pull up. And then her big plan was to ram his truck. Mm -hmm. But he drives like a Ford F2. It's like this huge pickup truck. And she's in a fucking Prius. So I don't know what she thought she was going to do. But she rams that truck. Somehow flips this big ass truck over. And she's not annihilated. But he wasn't in the truck. So he comes out. Whoops her ass. I haven't seen a man beat up a woman like that it, in a long time. It's kind of shocking. <laughs> on screen. And it continues inside it the house. house. Yeah. He whoops her ass. Like, he beats her like hamburger meat. And he, uh, I mean, that it felt very realistic. Uh, it looked very, yeah. very well choreographed. Um, but somehow, uh, she's able to grab her son while, um, the, like, they're fighting. Russell Crowe's character ends up grabbing Kyle. And he's, like, choking him. Another plot point, plot point from earlier in the film is Rachel was upset she couldn't find her cutting shears. Mm -hmm. So all this time they were in her pocket. Mm -hmm. So at the final, like, in the end, she grabs her shears out of her pocket and stabs Russell Crowe in the eye. Mm -hmm. The end. With a, a line, one of those zingers. Yeah, what does she say? Here's, oh, here's, here's your, your courtesy tab. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Anyway, so this film was very entertaining. Yes. Uh, ninety five percent for Russell Crowe. You know, originally uh, Nicholas Cage was the one they wanted. Oh, he would have done a fantastic job. He he, he would have carried this into. Uh, it's already exa an exaggerated film. Like he would have been in a, the fucking stratosphere with him. I think Russell Crowe actually is kind of a a sympathetic. Uh, you know, I don't agree with anything that he does, but he is able to create some empathy for him. That I don't know if Nicholas Cage. Well, I have a lot of notes, so let's go down them. So when you told me about this film, for some reason in my head, I, I thought it was Gerard Butler. And even as I started the film, I'm like, oh, Gerard Butler. And then when we see Russell Crowe, my first note is, ooh, Gerard Butler fell off. <laughs> no, Russell Crowe is. Russell Crowe fell off. He looks like um, like Santa Claus. Yeah, he's If big... Santa Claus dyed his beard. He looks like he's eating well, yeah. Um... So yeah, the opening scene, which was that montage of incivility and law, uh -huh. and like the lack of law enforcement, set a very clear tone. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I guess my biggest problem with the film is Rachel. Uh, Karen Pistorius plays Rachel. I liked her well enough, the she's, actor. Yeah, she's she does a fine job yeah. performance-wise. I think the character is... But a, the character... I think it was a misstep to not make her a more sort of sympathetic character because I would compare this film to two of my favorite crap films, Kidnap and The Call. Mm -hmm. Right? It has a similar vibe, similar... Sure, yeah, yeah. They're, they're kind of the um, mutation of what we saw in 90s thrillers. So I think why those films work so well is, I think, you know, seeing Halle Berry playing like a housewife or like a regular lady is ridiculous. But the characterizations, we do feel for her. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like we want her to triumph. Honestly, Rachel, hey, he could have killed her ass and I wouldn't have <laughs> Because initially why she gets in trouble with him is she's kind of being a, like a dick. Which she's allowed to be. She's allowed to be, but and, I think but, like her reaction to Russell Crowe just asking for an apology seemed like... I mean, this is why people, like, road rage is real, and this is why right. some people get fucked up, because they don't know how to just, like, take the L and move on. But I, th that, I think that's supposed to be the whole point of this movie, is about right. calling for kindness and empathy. Sure. Um, so, you know, she it's fate that she you're, digs you're, her heels in. You're right, and it does make sense. I just wish that the character would have been tweaked a little, so I didn't dislike Rachel. Yeah, it, it's just that Because she, I liked... Kyle. It's just that she seems so similar to all these videos of Karens everywhere acting out. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's that's what that's what she plays like, and her behavior plays like. So even that last line about "Here's your courtesy tap," it's like, yeah, but you, you still were, don't get it. You were a bitch. Yeah. <sighs> um, her brother Freddie. Oh my God. The the characterization, like the dialogue, and even the actor. I just thought, like, why make this character so smarmy? Uh, Austin P. McKenzie. Yeah, I, I agree with I that. I mean, he's he was, cute, but, like, I did not like him. Yeah, I agree. So uh, it's like now we have two characters from the same clan who are 
Like, but the kid, I thought. Um, but Kyle, I really like Gabriel liked. Bateman from Child's Play. From Child's Play and Lights yeah. Out I, is, I think he's there to provide the the sympathy and the empathy for what's going he, on. Yeah, that character does a good job. But getting back to Rachel being shitty, when her client fires her. I wrote down, because the, the client tells her, Rachel, get your shit together. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone knows this bitch needs to get her shit together. Well, because it's, it's also like she hasn't been through any great tragedy. And also, what I was thinking is, because the traffic that, the, to build the pressure in the beginning and there's all this traffic she's stuck in, I'm like, God, New Orleans has Godardian fucking traffic lights. Like, they don't move. Um but all and she has a line about like we're just eight miles away and it's like well maybe you should move to a new city uh, I, I don't know like it, it's like where why aren't these conversations happening like maybe this just is time to go somewhere simpler they gave Rachel a good line before Russell Crowe's character starts uh, like chasing her um, she says the day can't get any worse mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought that was funny mm-hmm. um, Th- but this place kind of like falling down on steroids remember that Michael Douglas film from the 90s mm-hmm. that is a much uh, more complex film for yeah it's more sure. sophisticated yeah um, speaking of sophistication this film does have a lot of um, devices and plot points that are meant to like be re- you know like like her, like uh, Kyle talking about Fortnite Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Rachel makes it a point, or we, it. There, there's a point made to the audience that she doesn't lock her cell phone. Mm-hmm. I thought that was annoying. Yeah, it, and then not only that, but then when she goes to the gas station, the camera cuts to her cell phone that she leaves in the car. Yes, it's like we get it. Mm-hmm. We get you don't lock your phone. We get that you left it in the car. Obviously, someone's going to take it. Yeah, it's very leading for the audience. Leading, the, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of plot, plot points that are leading. Yeah, um, it was written by Carl Ellsworth, who wrote Disturbia with uh, Shia LaBeouf and Red Eye, a Wes Craven film I actually quite like. And uh, he wrote the remake of Wes Craven's Last House. Oh, you know, someone commented on our re- the Wretched video that The Wretched reminded them of Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf. You know, I've never seen Disturbia. But I haven't seen it, so I'm not sure. Disturbia, is, I, from what I understand of it, is supposed to be um, kind of a contemporization of uh, Hitchcock's Vertigo. Okay. Um, another note I had is, like, wouldn't all of, like I said earlier, wouldn't all of New Orleans be looking for a man in a big gray pickup Did, truck? I kept, like, trying to look at the license plates. Do New Orleans license plates say America's Heartland on them? Oh, I don't know. We'll have to search and find the, out. <laughs> I thought they were trying to make a commentary about Midwestern values as well. Rachel makes a lot of interesting choices that were frustrating in the way that it's fun when you watch a horror film or a thriller. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, bitch, why are you doing that? Um, there's one scene where she, like while she's being actively chased, because he was chasing her for a while, but it was like, oh, this guy's weird. And then he hits her car. So now she knows she's in danger. So she's like running, r- running from him. There's a scene where she drives down a one way, which is, you know, what you would do. But then she ends up pulling into like a dead end parking lot. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> why would you do that? Um, Russell Crowe's beard situation is very interesting. Oh boy. He's co- well, you know, I, I, I noticed these things. He's mm-hmm. clearly like 100% gray and colors his hair. So this film must have been shot like over the course of like two or three weeks. Not because sure. you can see his regrowth, which I, you know, for someone like me, I find very distracting. Sure. But anyway, um, the people in the restaurant, when he kills the attorney, Andy, they ain't shit. I, I, again, I think that's the whole point of this movie. What would you do if we were sitting in uh, Norm's and some, like, and these two crazy ass men start arguing and the one, like, stabs the other? Would you jump in there? I, I I'd would be like, say, my name is Bennett. I would, say, I would, and I would get up and leave. Yeah. Yeah. I would call 911. Yeah. But it's, I felt like it was realistic. It was Because people ain't shit. Like, they really would sit there and film. But again, I The think commentary that, is accurate. Yes. Again, yeah. the point of the film, I think, is about how trash people are. Right. Come and how rude they are and how we need Yeah, to I know. Them. It's just like watching it is so frustrating. Um, I thought it was funny when Rachel gave Deborah. De- Deborah's name for Russell Crowe to kill. <laughs> yes, I did. I, well, I think it's more amusing that he decided not to. Like, nope, not going to kill her. I think he has a line too, but I think you probably deserve to get fired. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't mind when Freddie got lit on fire. <laughs> not surprised. Um, oh, finally, after like things have escalated and she has... Re- so about the two-thirds point, Rachel retrieves Kyle from school. Mm-hmm. 
And then she's running with Under him. Under duress. Under yeah. duress. And then she finally goes, um, we should go to the police station. Yeah, that, yeah. That, actually, that's the other big frustration. Is there, there are many opportunities. The, it, how it's uh, spliced together doesn't really make sense why, why she hasn't gone to the police or called them sooner on the little flip phone she has. Because she does, and she's, listen carefully, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, the timing seems off because I would have immediately called the police. Also, the scene where the son has to explain technology to the mom about like like location services on the Mac products, mm -hmm. that seemed a little sort of like, girl, you, you live in a major city and she looks like she's like in her early 30s. Mm -hmm. And then she just doesn't understand how like find my iPhone works. And then she's like, well, like she doesn't even think like, oh, well, could we track my phone? Like her son has to explain it. And then... The whole thing about her iPad being like... Stuck. It's almost like that part in Olympus Has Fallen when Angela Bassett has to explain to I think Gerard Butler what the hashtag symbol is. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, when the cement... So there's a scene where um, Russell Crowe's character has switched cars. So he he actually gets... Uh, there, earlier in the film, because Ra Rachel drives like an old Volvo that's kind of in bad shape. And her neighbor across the street gets a new minivan. So Rachel seems jealous of like her neighbor's minivan. Mm -hmm. So Russell Crowe ends up switching cars and we see him in her neighbor's minivan. So he must have killed the neighbor too. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not told that, but he's driving her minivan. Um, but when they realize that he's following them with the iPad location services, they start to chase each other and they're trying to get the attention of a police officer and Russell Crowe like rams into the police officer, the car spins, and then just when you think the officer's gonna get on the- That was a little overkill. On the, well. um, whatever you call the, what do you call that? The radio, mm -hmm. the CB radio, mm -hmm. I don't know. A cement truck hits him. It pulverizes like him. Pul like, like literally takes the top off the, that was pretty good. It was good, yeah. I, I, maybe a little over the top. Also reminds me of that scene in Kidnap where uh, they kill that cop. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. I wanna watch Kidnap again. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, when the mom says, we're on our own now. <laughs> God. Okay. Um, She's this... Uh, there's a line where she said, let's go to grandma's. I thought that was funny. <laughs> um, oh, the end of the film. So after she kills Russell Crowe, the police come. You know, it's been a big day for everyone. Because Russell Crowe's character has killed a number of people. She's been involved in, like, many activities with this man. Like, you know, she's witnessed many things. She got, like, beat up pretty badly. Yeah. Uh, but somehow doesn't need medical attention. Or the kid. The kid gets punched out and choked. And yeah. then the, the cop on the scene is like, well, we got your statement. You can go. Yeah, the final scene is, like, we see her and the son kind of walking like they're going to leave. And then you see a cop kind of grab her and talk to her for a second. And then the audio comes back on and he's like, well, we got your statement. You're free to go. Well, no, she's like, Freddy's alive. Let's go see him. Oh, and then the cop tells her that. For, yeah. So she's like, oh, Freddy's alive. Yeah, if he is, he's burned to a crisp. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so my final, final note here is the moral of the story is don't honk your horn. Which she doesn't, she hasn't really learned. And, and that's why we have to have them, that's why the, the script has them leaving immediately to go to the hospital so she can be in the car again. And then of course, predictably, uh, almost get in an accident and see how she reacts. And she just seems like, Rachel seems like a character that hasn't really received the message. But that, but like you said, that's the message of the film. And you know, she doesn't need to have redeeming qualities to have this happen to her. And of course I feel not, like yeah. most, pi the, most people are closer to Rachel of course. As far as just being, like, selfish and self-centered. And she doesn't deserve what happens to of her. Of course It's not, just no. that, you know, it, 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 it's just supposed to make you think, like, how you affect other people. You don't know how your actions affect other people. Right. Well, we need to wrap this up. Uh, I enjoyed this film. Yeah. I think it's entertaining. Sure. I would definitely watch it again with a group of people. Oh, yeah, yeah. What would you give this film? Uh, I think Russell Crowe is pretty... I haven't really enjoyed him for a while. He was really good. Uh, this Oh, the soundtrack. David Buckley's score uh, is very uh, persuasive. Um, the ending, it falters terribly in the ending, as most of these films do. Maybe not as bad as Kidnap does. But I'd say two and a half out of five is fair. I would say two and a half, but I would definitely recommend it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anything else? No. All right, bye. Bye.